Welcome back guys. Uh, this time we have here um, Opel or Vauxhall uh, 1.7 uh, um, DTI. This is the EDU uh, which means that uh, this is the fuel pump controller. Um, it's uh, bolted on in place in the back of the engine block and uh, we are going to try and fix this now. Um, I've already opened it, but um, this is the um, the reference. Let me see if you can see it. Okay, this is this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so most of the time, what happens with these units are um, the the solders. Like, I don't know if you can see, but I believe this one was open already because I can see here something a little bit burnt. Anyway, um, what usually happens with these um, uh, EDU units um, is the solders. I'm going to leave um, uh, a, v uh, a little clip of the um, the digital microscope for you to see the solders solders uh, and what's going on with them and um we are going to solder it back on, uh, try to see what's going on here. And uh, solder, basically, we have to solder at least these three, these two, these two, th three, these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones. In this case, we have to check what's going on with this um, capacitor. I believe that's what it is. These ones and uh, maybe these ones, but usually you don't have to touch these. So let me just have a little bit of flux, solar flux to it. Today we are going to use um, a 60 watt soldering iron, just because um, this EDU unit, the, it has a lot of um, anticipation and like that we cannot do it with a small soldering iron we cannot penetrate or melt the, the solder um, as it should okay so a little bit in every single one of them that I'm going to be solder in this case this car has a really aggressive injection you can hear it looks like it has uh, hammers inside the engine, which is a um, common problem in these cars. Uh, they're getting older, and usually it's hard to find one that never had this problem or um, that it isn't about to. So I'm just going to put everything there. I've seen already with the microscope which ones I'm going to have to, uh, to attend. That one, okay, like that. So let me just see if the iron is already hot enough. Some solder wire, and let's see how it goes. Of course, after I'm going to check it with the um, the microscope again just to make sure everything is well done okay it's really easy to to melt and to repair these units as long as you have a soldering iron like this it's a 60 watt it's it makes a 
really fast work on these uh, pins here. I'm gonna have to to have to make or buy a smoke extractor because well usually with the um, the smaller uh, soldering iron with a 30 watt you don't get as much smoke but um, in this case there's a lot of it especially with the with the flux. Especially with the flux. So I'm doing this uh, in real time uh, so you guys can actually see how long it takes to to repair one of these units and people usually ask a lot of money for it. Most of the times this is the problem. Sometimes you get the capacitors inside they also uh, sometimes you know uh, get damaged but um, I don't believe this one is the case anyway it's a uh, really easy to put it back in the car <coughs> and um, make sure it's working okay let me just clean my the tip of my soldering iron again <coughs> pretty much out of place and actually I don't think I can see the soldering tab there let me just okay so <clears throat> for this one I'm going to use the, the smaller soldering, soldering iron there's no point on using such a strong such a strong soldering iron on this kind of of job yeah. so what I'm going to do now is to create a new place to weld that capacitor was blown so let me just clean the tip like this oh. I guess I can start a little bit of rubbing alcohol and uh, start to clean everything so we can um, get a clear picture when we are um, checking it with our digital microscope everything is looking good so far
see if we can put it back in there. That's it. So now, let me just use this to dry the board. You can use you can use a, an air compressor. Um, I rather use it because alcohol evaporates really fast. It's better to dry it than to spread it. That's why I use heat instead of um, an air compressor. I'm going to check these ones now. I don't know if they're um, we need to solder them or not, but I actually didn't check them when I was um, checking it with the um, with digital multimeter, with the digital microscope, I mean. So let me see it now, but first I'm going to make a short clip of these already fixed, so you can see the difference from the first clip to this clip. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's just see this small one now. Okay, as you can see, uh, you'll see in the clip the um, the pad where it should should sit it was broken. It was it was burnt. So <clears throat> I just reroute it and uh, solder it back in place. Uh, let me see these ones. Um, they look okay, but it's actually really fast to solder them, so I, I might as well do it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to solder these ones. Just a little touch, it doesn't need much of um, soldering uh, flux. I was going to save paste again, but this is not soldered paste, this is um, flux. This makes all the difference when you are uh, reflowing or uh, soldering something. This makes all the difference between 
getting a good solder and a clean solder, a strong solder, <clears throat> and a, a bad one which will break over time. There's a few ones that have more um, heat resistance, probably because they are soldered to something thicker on the other side of the board, and um, usually that's those are grounds. This, like that. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a little longer to to melt it, but uh, you know because probably I would need um, the other one, the sixty watt uh, soldering iron to so this this part, these two pins, but. Um, it's already turned off and uh, it takes a long time to eat the temperature, temperature so that's why I've done it like this anyway <clears throat> it's done um, this is to, to show you guys how this is um, this EDU modules uh, electronic diesel unit uh, I believe that's what it is it's a diesel pump control unit and um, usually the car fails to start it has um, or uh, it has a really hard injection you can feel it uh, like there is nails inside the engine or something um, because this controls the amount of fuel um, that the pump uh, injects at every single time this takes the sensors from the um, MAF sensor to the intake pressure sensor to the well the the RPM the the throttle pedal position everything and it calculates it to send the right amount of fuel to the engine. If this is not working properly, then that's what happens. The injection just gets really really hard. It can even destroy a piston. Um, if you just um, leave it as it is a good thing about this is that if you find another one that it's known to be good you can change this uh, part for another from a loaner car to your car no uh, programming involved this is not a programmable part this is uh, an hardware part uh, and there's no software involved in this so yeah guys all i have left to do is to dry this and then apply some sealing, sealant silicone here. Remove this one, the old one, and um, just put it back like this, and um, job done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, uh, hopefully, help someone. This is a really easy job to do. Nothing major involved, and um, as you can see, guys the car will be good as new okay guys if you enjoyed this video please um, subscribe press the like button don't forget to 
press the, the bell icon so you can get a notice on a notification um, when new videos are coming out so yeah guys thanks again and um, hopefully you enjoy it